Happy last week of summer school. Congratulations on making it this far. I do actually have a language objective and a regular slide for us, so I kind of just ruined the surprise, but whatever, you're already here. So our language objective for today is I can complete holes one and two on my Sphero golf course using a teacher video, an example, my slide requirements, my Sphero, and teacher help office hours. Um, our agenda is take attendance, watch the mini golf introduction, and complete holes one and two. Now, I am telling you that it is going to look very similar from day to day. Tuesday is three and four, and then commenting on peers one and two in Flipgrid. Then Wednesday, obviously, is holes five and six, and commenting on three and four. Thursday is making holes seven, eight, and nine, and commenting on five and six. And then you can guess already that it is going to be commenting on eight and nine, seven, eight, and nine on your peers on Flipgrid, and then returning your Spiros to school. So this little video is actually going to encompass the entire last week of summer school, which hopefully is pretty exciting. Um, I also do have our week at a glance up and running for you. It has all of that information step by step for you as well. It looks like a lot. I promise it's not actually a lot. So let's talk about your Sphero Mini Golf Challenge. Um, can you play mini golf in your house with a Sphero? That's what we're finding out. So your challenge is to create a mini golf course for your Sphero to complete using the guideline for each hole. Um, since we're working at home, we obviously have some wiggle room. I can't expect you to all use the same materials. That'd be silly. Um, but can you take on the challenge? So let's start off with what do you notice? Here's a bunch of different pictures of mini golf. What do you notice? So one thing that I noticed is that these holes are all very different in theme. They have a whole bunch of different cool ideas going on, a lot of different fun objects and activities. That's part of what makes mini golf fun, um, is that it's a whole bunch of different styled themes that you wouldn't see at a normal golf course. So how is this gonna work? Other than you sitting here and saying, Mrs. Beetle, you're crazy. So there are a few key steps to success. Um, step number one, design your hole first. Then take the picture of it and attach it to our slides. Take it one hole at a time. Don't try to do all of them all at once. It will become overwhelming. Number three, try, try again. Uh, you might not get it right away and that's okay. I actually just posted my Flipgrid for my first hole and it took me eight codes today. That does not encode any of, or that does not count any of the coding that I have done previously to try and get it figured out. Record your final run. Um, record that on Flipgrid for each hole. Each Flipgrid, each hole has its own Flipgrid. And then score yourself. Um, the goal is to get better. So then what will you need? Uh, you're going to need a few things that are like designated. One is obviously your Sphero. I didn't write it on there. Duh. Okay. Um, you're going to need some sort of hole. Uh, it could be a piece of paper with an X or cut out shape of a circle slightly larger than your Sphero. This is mine. It is a piece of colored paper that is about the same size as my Sphero. I count it in when the Sphero touches the hole. Okay. Um, different colored paper or sticky notes or different colored items that you can uh, change to color to cause color changes. And then any other miscellaneous obstacle, ramps, etc. There's a whole list of ideas over here. Um, really be creative. Use what you have laying around. It is a exciting time. Mm -hmm. So Let's talk about the first course as an example. I have mine here. Um, this is the basics core or basic hole. So you have to have at least two obstacles to move around, a starting spot near the ending spot, but the sphere must go out and around, kind of like a U-turn. Um, and then there's a collision code. So if I am requiring a specific kind of code, I have included what the code should look like on your screen. So I have a few books set up here and a birthday card. I found an old hockey puck and a dancing frog. And then obviously one of my cats who decided that it was going to be useful and lay in the middle of everything. Um, I did move the cat before, so it isn't counted as an obstacle. Not in this one, at least. So here is all the requirements. I've taken a photo and I have just told you that it took me eight attempts to code. Um, and that is today and I can't spell attempts. So it took me eight attempts today. And then the next slide is an example of my code. So I want you to not only show me what your course looks like and show me it running, but then show me your code. 
um, your codes are getting pretty impressive the more work that you do here. So each hole has different requirements, has different lengths of code that you might need, and obviously each one has a spot for you to screenshot your code. At the very bottom, there are helpful codes and functions. Um, so here are some examples of different functions that you might want to create or different codes that you might find useful as you start creating and as you start having to reach different spots. I'm not asking you to recreate the wheel, do the best you can, uh, and feel free to use these codes. Like these codes are here for you. Um, yeah, this could be really cool if you get creative and you jump into it. I am very excited, very, very excited to see all of you guys putting your holes together. And then obviously I also mentioned having your Flipgrid. Your links are right down here um, for you to actually open those Flipgrids up and record. So yeah, I'm super excited for this. I hope you're as excited as I am. Um, if you're watching this on Friday, you have to wait until Monday to actually start recording, but you can go ahead and start like getting things ready. Other than that, I'm super excited. Happy last week of summer school. Let's go out with a bang.